Which of the Titans does Godzilla deliberately target as he roams his kingdom, and what do they have in common to warrant such violent treatment from the king of the monsters? Most of the Titan community obeys and respects the mighty power of Godzilla, and he is the reigning monarch over the Titan Empire. But there are a certain few deviants that continually catch his eye. While he's had strong enemies who threaten to reclaim the crown from him and are on par with his power level such as Ghidorah or the Muto Prime, there are a few titans who are significantly weaker than Godzilla, yet he goes out of his way to attack them. So today, Heralds of the Titans, let's discuss a few of these outliers that call Godzilla's attention not being powerful enough to challenge him for the throne of an alpha, but still defy his rule anyway. Today, we'll be primarily talking about the Titans Scylla and Tiamat, the two who Godzilla attacked in Godzilla x Kong, but this philosophy has applied to other Titans in the past, and Godzilla is actually not wrong to have killed Tiamat or Scylla. And today, we will explain why. We first encounter Scylla on the big screen. She bows to Godzilla following the skirmish between King Ghidorah. And following this, we see her during her conflict with Godzilla in Rome at the beginning of Godzilla x Kong. The graphic novel prequel Godzilla x Kong The Hunted helps to shed more light on how this conflict erupted and gave us insight into the rules of living under Godzilla as the king. The primary characteristics that unite both Scylla and Tiamat is that they are classified by Monarch as destroyers. Destroyers are classified by Monarch as a class of titans only interested in destruction and feeding with little to no ulterior motive. Titans like Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and Muto Prime also fall into the category of destroyers, seeing as there is very little nuance to their motivations. And Scylla is one of these destroyers, though we'll be talking more about Tiamat in just a moment. Scylla bowed to Godzilla, but it was only for her survival, as she does not respect Godzilla as the Alpha. Instead, she only begrudgingly follows him so that she does not die, and she has been very vocal about her standpoint for years. In the events leading up to the New Empire, she became much more agitated. The graphic novel details her spiral into destruction, causing more and more chaos as a way to protest Godzilla as the Alpha. Scylla begins by pursuing more nuclear radiation in order to augment her own power, and sets her sights on the Kudankulam nuclear power plant in India where she battled a spine prowler and begins to siphon the energy for herself. While the Indian military did its best to contain Scylla, she caused several human casualties, and this resulted in a nuclear meltdown which supercharged her before she retreated back into the ocean. She then targeted the UK nuclear labs in Preston and the Aviano Air Base in Italy, where the United States was storing nuclear armaments, and eventually, her disruption of the natural order called her attention to none other than Godzilla. At this point, she wasn't yet powerful enough to pose the same magnitude of a threat as someone like Ghidorah or Mechagodzilla did, but Bernie Hayes speculates that this may have been what she was working towards, and working towards challenging Godzilla as the next alpha. On his podcast, he talks in depth about Scylla's assault on the nuclear facilities and offers a few different explanations as to why, ranging from the possibility that she's getting ready to reproduce, the idea that she's preparing to face Godzilla, and more. Given that she has revolted against Godzilla before though, and has not kept her disdain for the king a secret, the latter seems to be much more likely, and Godzilla knows this, as he knows that Scylla is attempting to gain more power to oppose his rule. Whatever the reason though, Godzilla had to make an example. If she could be allowed to roam free unquestioned, then not only would she continue to cause more destruction, but might eventually get to the point where she can challenge Godzilla for king, or in this case, the queen of the monsters. Given that Scylla is a destroyer, we know that she is very difficult to reason with, and Godzilla has already had problems holding her under his influence. So now it is time for more drastic measures. She has had her last chance. This leads us directly into their clash in Rome, where Godzilla ensures that the entirety of the Titan community understands his rule, and the protest will not be tolerated any further. After this though, he would set his sights on another Titan in Tiamat, who shares some similarities with Scylla, but quite notably, he had one more major reason why he would target Tiamat even though she was not outright attacking nuclear plants or humanity. 
While we know that Godzilla needed Tiamat's energy to prepare himself for the fight against Shimo and the Scar King, there is another reason why he did not feel remorse or hesitation when it came to fighting and killing the Titan. Much like Scylla, Tiamat has become a liability, and Godzilla could make an example out of her while also preparing himself for the war in the Hollow Earth. In Godzilla Dominion, we got to see that Tiamat did in fact challenge Godzilla for the crown of the Alpha before, taking advantage of his injured state after he had a battle with King Ghidorah. After facing down Ghidorah, an injured Godzilla sought to reclaim one of his old hideouts, and in his vulnerable state was ambushed by Tiamat. With Tiamat believing that a weakened Godzilla was a prime target for usurping him, the two thrashed and clashed, and make no mistake, Tiamat made a very good effort to kill Godzilla. The king, though, earned his crown for a reason, and once again was able to redirect the battle onto land, and he forced Tiamat to submit to him. What's interesting about this, though, is that Godzilla did not kill Tiamat even though he would have had every right to after what she had done, but instead, Godzilla showed her mercy. This mercy, though, was not reciprocated in good faith, and Tiamat continued to clash with Godzilla moving forward. She became highly territorial and wanted to carve out her own sector of the Earth where Godzilla would not be welcome. Godzilla is the master and the king of the Earth, and the entire planet besides the Hollow Earth is his territory. And Tiamat's stand against Godzilla in the film is a clear indicator that she does not respect his territory. Godzilla's territory is the entire planet. He demanded that she return this plot of land to him, and she refused. She had been a nuisance for years, and Godzilla understood that eventually, Tiamat would have done what Scylla did. When the threat of the Scar King rose to prominence, though, Godzilla saw an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, handle both problems at the same time. He felt no remorse for killing Tiamat, simply because he knew that eventually, this day would come but at least now she could serve the purpose of helping him energize and prepare for his battle with Shimo. These destroyers, however, are everywhere and constantly show themselves to be one of Godzilla's most persistent headaches. They do not submit to him easily and they do not care about the leadership hierarchy and want nothing more than to do their own thing and wherever they want to go, feeding on whatever they want to feed on, no matter how much destruction it causes or how much it upsets the balance of nature. Godzilla's purpose is to maintain the balance of the Earth, and this means ensuring that no one Titan has too much power. Destroyer-class Titans like these, though, make his job much more difficult, and it's interesting to consider that if a Titan like Rodan, who is another Destroyer class, would rebel against Godzilla, what Godzilla would do. We know that Rodan actively at first opposed Ghidorah, and that Rodan doesn't follow out of a sense of loyalty such as Mothra. Instead, Rodan saw weakness in the Empire as power and changed hands, and thought that he could take advantage of this weakness by placing himself in the fray. Given how he remained docile towards Godzilla leading up to Ghidorah's attack, it's likely that he understood that he could not stand a chance against Godzilla. But he is another example of a Titan who is always on the lookout for a way to amass more power. While someone like Mothra is a protector, destroyer titans like these are always looking for a way to conquer others, to claim territory, and to flash their strength as a show of force and intimidation. The only one keeping these destroyers in line is Godzilla, who has earned himself a reputation that has caused even the strongest of destroyers to hesitate. Just because they obey, though, doesn't mean that they're on Godzilla's good side, only that they have earned themselves one more day of life until Godzilla decides that they are a problem. But anyway, my friends, what do you think of these destroyer-class titans? Do you think Scylla and Tiamat could have eventually staged a coup if Godzilla didn't put an early stop to their rampages? And would Rodan have eventually done the same? Are these destroyers worth keeping around, or should they be eradicated in order to strengthen Godzilla's empire? Anyway, my friends, thank you so much for stopping by the channel today and giving me some of your time. Hit that subscribe button, and have a great day.